Hi friends, I'm here to talk to you today about Fall Streak. And it's, uh, I haven't done a Steam free to play review in a hot minute, so I was wanting to do one for this game in specific because I feel like it's one of the best Steam games I've played, like no exaggeration for story alone. And I give it a, I'm gonna give you the score off the bat because I'm gonna spoil a few things during this review to kind of like maybe get some, give you some information that might hook you into one to like play the game and read the story and see what it's about. But I give the game a 10 out of 10 because I, it's honestly the best visual novel I've ever played. And I've played Doki Doki Literature Club and even though I really enjoyed that game because it did some really neat things like the file manipulation like they do in When the Darkness Comes and that was probably the first game I kind of experienced that in where the game was kind of taking information from your computer and you had to do certain things and the character would actually like speak to you and break the fourth wall that was super cool but i feel like this has a lot better story and it it's one of those games that if you're somebody that likes to feel a bunch of different emotions this does a very good job at like playing on your emotions because this is where the spoilers are going to start but the first thing it does is it's very lighthearted at the start like most of these games before it like takes that drastic turn for the shock value but it's very lighthearted and the game has really good pixel animation like it has different pixel faces that it uses throughout for like to face certain emotions that are really well done like all the pixels are pretty well done and the author actually uses movement to demonstrate what the characters are doing especially in the balloon battle royale that happens in the middle of the game before all the tragic things start happening so the characters are really dynamic and one of the coolest things i think the author does it's one of my favorite things about it was the character kind of it seems like she superimposes herself through at least i don't know if super had a lease but i i'm not sure if superimposes is a word but basically at least gives you the viewpoint of what the author it seems like she has a lot of information that's outside of the world in the game personified kind of by like the golden dream at the start where you see that she's like kind of existing by herself during your dreams i really thought that's where the game was going to get stuck but it actually goes into an immersive world that has its own problems and setting i'm actually glad it left the golden world because it was kind of depressing as well from the get-go because it was talking about how she was so bored and there was no nothing new everything was a part of a script and the script is the author slash adelise is in this case and the thing about this is the reason why I like this plot mechanic so much is that Adelise will explain things to you and to the other characters and give an unbiased, like, uh, objective opinion on why somebody might do something. There's a bunch of little stories they do that kind of give you a theme for what is probably, it's like foreshadowing for what's going to happen in the game. And one of the stories is, it's supposed to show, it's supposed to basically give you the theme of utilitarianism because there's a girl and she's like a forest deity or something like that and this girl this village is really struggling and this mom takes her son to the forest deity and the forest deity cries to give him water because he was like pretty much thirsting to death and then she, the mom takes her to the village and then she starts crying for everybody and then they start running out of food and the forest deity starts crying blood and then she revitalizes the field so they're just like oh no well we need to use her so we can like bring everything back to make sure we don't all die and starve and thirst and whatnot. So they like chain her up and then they start like draining blood and her tears from her. And then a character goes, the boy that she saved earlier in the story goes to save her, but it ends up killing her because he can't free her and he wants to get her out of that meaningless existence. It's something that Elise brings up because the characters are listening to the story. And how can you tell this story to a bunch of little kids? All the characters are kids, and the librarian lady's telling them this story. And Adelise, like, all the kids are like, oh, that's such a messed up story, blah, 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 blah. I would have saved her or something. And Adelise was like, well, it was her death or everybody's death or her suffering or everybody would die. And she's like, it's easy to say that from, like, a, a spectator just perspective but if you were like actually there and your friend and family were like starving and drowning to death or not drowning what's the opposite of drowning thirsting to death you would want to save them too and you might like sacrifice somebody else to do it which is a really good point even though i don't like it because i don't want to think about it that way but at least gives you that perspective which is really cool and another thing is this is one of the more messed up things just to kind of give you a taste of the messed up stuff that happens 
this is a sad part well it's kind of sad but it's not one of the super sad parts i'm not gonna spoil that for you if you want to see that i think you should either play the game or watch my walkthrough to actually see the story for it and this game made me cry i'm just gonna put that out there this game made me cry so hard granted like every time something sad happened i was taking a shot so like i drank half a bottle half a handle of vodka which is like eight liter uh, 0.8 liters of vodka so that's a lot and I was so drunk and all this sad stuff was happening and I was crying. And I'm just gonna let you know, anything bad that happened to Alouette hurt my soul. Characters like that I feel so bad for because she's a little bit slow. And bad things that happened to her just really hurt me so bad. And it's just like, I'm not very emotional about a good bit of stuff, but when it comes to like people suffering with their friends and family and stuff and there's nothing they can do about it and they're just out of like bad circumstance, that hurts me. But the torture thing, let's get back to that. So the, there's a flashback explaining before the collapse and there's this girl and she meets uh, in the orphanage and then she meets an older girl who it seems to be like cheery and whatnot and it's really nice to her and we're gonna call girl A the first girl and girl B the girl she meets okay so it hopefully doesn't get too complicated so girl B is in the orphanage and people in the orphanage still food at the nighttime and will, because like food scarce, and this actually causes people to starve. So girl A kills a little boy that steals her food and kills a bunch of people that steals her food. Kind of gets like a serial killer kind of thing going because she's trying to protect girl B because girl B was super nice to her. Well, girl B was left into the orphanage because her parents couldn't afford to pay, keep her and pay for her older sister's medicine because her older sister is sick. So they left girl B at the orphanage, but then they come back to get her and girl A is like, oh, you're leaving me? I don't really trust him. And girl B is like, oh, it'll be fine. And uh, leaves with him. And then later on, girl A is like worried about her. So she's like trying to go check on her. And then she finds out that her dad has been letting a nobleman rape her for money so he can pay for the older si girl B's older sister's treatments. So she follows him to his house and then she slits the dad's throat like right off the bat. So. Then she goes down to the basement, the nobleman's pretty much raping Girl B. So she gets into a fight with him and then ends up killing him. And then the mother comes in. This is where the torture happens. So this is something the serial killer Girl A shows is that her punishment, like the mom gets punished so much worse than the other two, even though the other two were probably more guilty, but she didn't have the time to punish them. Like she probably wanted to because it was too much of a risk. The nobleman actually gives her a pretty big fight. But what she does first is the mom tries to run away and girl A slits her like Achilles tendon and then starts dragging her through the house to see her husband that's murdered. And then she asks her, like she starts cutting her up and stuff. And then she asks her, she's like, oh, do you think anybody will help you? Cause I know that she's been getting tortured this whole time and raped and I bet you nobody came to help her so we're gonna see if anybody will come help you as I torture you and then what happens is she gets mortar and pestle from the kitchen and she starts grinding up glass inside of a pretty much a cup or something or bowl she put she at one point like cuts the woman's womb out of her stomach shows it to her and the woman tries to close her eyes so she cuts her eyelids off so she has to watch her like dissect her and then she breaks her nose with the mortar and then she holds the bowl up to the woman's, the mom's mouth so she has to breathe into the glass which pretty much seals her fate. But it's super gruesome. And this ain't even the sad part. This is kind of like, I was cheering her on because I felt like they all deserved that. Granted, the older sister, uh, you can't prioritize one of your kids and if you let somebody rip, oh, that was just awful. Like the parents' reasoning was just unredeemable, I think. And the story is just so, amazing i can't really i can't sum it up to you enough that you should like give this game a chance it's so good if you if you don't like graphic things and you don't like disturbing things i would stay away from it because it's very emotional and a lot of really really messed up stuff happens the torture scene is just like a tip of the iceberg it gets so much worse not like uh gruesome death wise but just like what happens to the characters and like how sad it is but thanks for watching it as always guys and if you could Please like and subscribe, and I always I appreciate all y'all's support, like watching the videos and commenting. I really appreciate, really love to read y'all's comments. But thanks for watching as always. Bye.